advancement in artificial intelligence. Soon enough, robots could be helping us do household chores thanks to a project led by a local professor. Joining me now is Deepak Pathak from Carnegie Mellon University, and we'll explain the boxes in just a minute. <laughs> but first, talk to us about your program or the program known or project known as Whirl. Yes, so the idea is we take inspiration from how uh, human children learn. And if you look at babies from the age of six months to three, four year old, they learn a lot by watching their parents. And then when you are not watching the kids, they are practicing on their own. Like they are moving their hands, they, they do things around. And this is the way we learn throughout our life. Like mm -hmm. we have people teach us and then we practice. This is how we do in our lab as well. So our robots watch other humans. Can be human live in front of them or human can be on a YouTube video somewhere else and they'll watch them and then they learn and practice by themselves to improve themselves on a task. And so what is your goal? Is your goal to have robots be able to do laundry? Because if so, sign me up. Yes. <laughs> so eventually, yes, uh, I think they start. The, the dream here is to bring low cost, cheap robots for household chores. Uh, and I've been in Pittsburgh for uh, three years almost, and I know it's how difficult it is to uh, manage a big house and do all the chores, and that's where these robots can come into play. So how, how do robots and learning, how does it differ from other kinds of robots and what we see? Yeah, so usually when you see robots in an industry, like there are many robots that make your car, that assemble your car's doors. All those robots are pre-programmed to act in a special way. Like somebody is hard coding every joint that moves on the robot. So if you take, the, take those robots out of the factory, they cannot function. While these robots are here where we are built, they're run by AI. So instead of being hard coded, they learn by themselves how to do things. They can work in the uh, real world. So when you say AI, that makes me think of like other things like chat GPT yeah. and, and things like that. So what are the differences between something like that and how you guys are building your robots? Yes, so what, we're, so what we build in our lab, we, build, we don't build the robots, we make the robots brain. So that's similar to chat GPT kind of models, but chat GPT is an online model, so it is only turned on internet data. It doesn't have physical physicality or physical understanding, while these robots have physical understanding. Like unlike chat GPT, there is no data of robot on the internet. So you cannot just train on Reddit and have a robot. Robots need to practice and improve themselves. So this is, you can think of it as physical intelligence, while chat GPT is digital intelligence. So you're actually gonna show us, you have two robots here with yes. you today. Uh, so where are we gonna start here? Yes, so the robots we have, uh, these robots learned uh, by themselves in a simulator by falling numerous number of times, like they fell around, I think, a billion times in, in the simulator, so which is like close to uh, years of human uh, experience. And then they learn to walk uh, by themselves. So what you see here, uh, none of this, none of the setup in this robot is hard coded. It has learned all by itself how to walk, how much power to apply to its motors. And the good part is we can take these robots and we can give them any task. We don't have to program the task. So for instance, this is a very low cost robot and we can ask it to climb this desk over here since there is no wall in the studio and it will go and try to climb it. So this robot costs less than a MacBook. Uh, so its motors are low cost and noisy. But despite the low cost. This is, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little. <gasps> oh my gosh, it's like a so, uh, <laughs> can we bring it down here? <gasps> so this robot used the camera on top to figure out when to climb. So all Shuchen is doing, he's only giving directions to the robot. He's not telling how to move your legs. So it's like using Google Maps. Um, so we have uh, another one here. We have another robot. Yes. Show. Do you ever feel like you're a part of a scary movie? In well, creating these, are, these things as the in robot person, follows they are you? Very, very small, so. Right. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is really incredible. I, yeah, Royce and Megan are in the studio right now and they're watching all of this as well with their mouths wide open. Oh. And so tell me about this one. Yes, so this one, now, usually you may have heard of in, in robotics, there are terms like uh, mapping, planning, like you yes. first make a map, then you make a plan. Yeah. But if I ask you how many stairs are there from your road to your apartment, you'll have no idea. No because you don't make a map when you're walking. Right. You directly use the sensory input and then you output the command. So this robot looks at the camera and it tries to uh, walk past any obstacle it sees on its own. So here, if we put this makeshift stairs over here. So 
So as soon as some height, uh, say any high stairs come, it didn't just try to walk over them. So we have taken this robot to Highland Park. Uh, there's a very difficult trail behind the Highland Park and it can climb over those with other dogs as well. This uh, is incredible. It's incredible. I'm, it's also like, it's, it's crazy to watch and a little terrifying. Well, if you, yeah. uh, well. <laughs> I mean, I know that this is the way of the future and it's, it's gonna be helpful and useful, but it is crazy to watch. Now, if you see one thing here uh, to notice, look at the height of stair and the height yeah. of robot. Yeah. They're almost the same height. So this is not like humans climbing stairs. This is more like humans climbing walls. Yeah. So it, it does things like how you climb a wall, like you take your hand to the side. So if you notice it, it did that. Uh, it's trying to yeah, going up. That. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. More to come, obviously, from you and your team and Whirl. We thank you so and much. This for is the first author of the world, uh, Shikhar. And thank uh, you. I know we have your team here in the yes. wings. Thank you again so much for coming in, and we really appreciate it.